night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is another DJ roundtable. A lot of fun stuff. And always, hopefully, and always hoping for great information from my fellow DJs here. We are down at least one DJ, and I think we got another DJ coming here. Hopefully sometime in the next few minutes may check in, or he may have a gig. Do you hear anything? But I do know one DJ is on his little vacation. Tommy is uh, enjoying him some time off. And we hope he enjoys it and stays safe. As always, it is a wonderful time with you here. And if you're watching this on Inst on, as I say, Instagram, if you're watching this on uh, Twitch, thank you so much. You're watching it live. If you're watching the repeat over on YouTube, you could watch this on Twitch. We go live on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock on Twitch. You can always uh, go to um twitch and go tbm productions underscore our buddy and find me very quickly and i see cool thing is in the chat cool thing how are you sir and i see uh mike Don't we ban them i see uh fred the good son I i'm sorry the godson i keep saying good son you got one o versus two o's um and also i want to welcome you guys all here but if you're watching this on youtube do me a favor the algorithm is the algorithm, and I know you guys have been doing it, and I appreciate it. Keep hitting that thumbs up. Make sure if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe, and also make sure you check the bell icon to uh, make sure that you know that when I upload a new video uh, for the show or for other things, you can watch it and give me some feedback on that. I appreciate and I also want to say to all the DJs here, they also have YouTube channels. They have social media, so please follow them up. And I keep asking, I've yet to see it, DJ Brantley, make sure you send him a message on Instagram. Have you got any? I'll get you some this week. I've been super busy. Oh, you have, has anyone has anyone asked you for a sticker? You and one other person, and I've already got the list, got them ready to go. I've just got oh, one other person. All right. Well, make sure I want you to take a picture of that of that of that sticker somewhere, and tag DJ Brentley. Put it on there and put it up there. And I'm hoping, hopefully, we'll get some other stuff from other people, either Jeff and Matt and Dwayne. At least have a picture of them on your phone. Look, the gig log. Take a picture of you with the gig log somewhere and tag them on their social media. At least do that. If not, there's probably some ways, other ways to get a hold of them, but tag them that you're watching their stuff and you support them on this show and they have a lot of great information. Speaking of some great information, uh, Dwayne, I saw the video you were explaining to someone how to hook up uh, speakers. I thought that was just awesome. Um, I give you the thumbs up, of course, watching that. I try to support everyone here with their gig logs and everything like that. I always try to give a thumbs up and watch what is happening. And it is always awesome when I see other DJs helping out people when they ask questions. And that's what we're here for, to answer some of your questions. Hopefully, it's a great answer. Again, this is our opinions. This is what we do and how we think things. I'm not saying it's a correct answer, but it's an answer. <laughs> with that said, let's go off to the show. And again, buckle up. We have some stuff going on. And we always have some great insight. Uh, first thing first, um, I know we were talking a little bit before here about microphones just a few minutes ago. And I want to ask you guys this. What is the one piece of gear, if you had to run into a um, where you store your gear at and had to rescue one piece because of a flood or whatever, and you had to rescue one item, Besides your laptop, what would be the one piece you would grab? I'm going to start with Dwayne on this one. Mr. Dixon, if you had to go and save, besides your laptop, your laptop is safe. It's it's all secure. But if you could save one piece, one piece only, because of fill in blank, whatever the reason is, hurricane, flood, snowstorm, uh, whatever it is, what would be that one piece you would go and save? Oh, that's a hard one. Oh. <laughs> that's why I asked it. <laughs> you have to be able to carry it out. You carry it, wheel it, put it on a cart, whatever you need to do to get it out of that area. But you need to save. I know. I, I would, I'll answer because mine's easy. Uh, probably okay. my cable box. 
because okay. I do not know how to even go about replacing every single cable that I own, um, nor do I want to. All the rest of the stuff, I could tell you what's in that storage unit and, uh, you know, get new speakers or get whatever it is. But cables, I, I don't I don't ever want to have to replace that cable box. Okay. That's terrible, but that's either that or the photo booth. But the photo booth is just, it's a money thing. Like it's, I'd rather, you know, it's expensive, but... We're not, not looking so at the money part. We're looking at the one thing that you can't live without, that one thing you'd have to save. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, everything yeah. else uh, between insurance and just, you know, had to put money on your pocket, put on a credit card, whatever to replace. Hey, it is what it is. But uh, again, your 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 thing is a cable box. I already see people talking in the chat. We're going to get some t stuff in the chat in a second here. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dixon, you want me to come back to you so you think for a second or two? Yeah, that's that's too hard. I got too many. I got so much stuff. Um, You're all like kids. Uh, <laughs> you know, your friends and family are safe. I will put this in the scenario. You don't have to run back there, grab the cat or a dog or a family member. They are safe. They're off at picnic or something. And lovely, sitting there enjoying themselves in the lovely sunshine and whatever. I'm saying that back at where you store your gear at, something traumatic has happened, and you have to save a piece of gear as was the one piece you would save. So I'm going to come back to you, uh, Mr. Dixon. I'm going to go over to Jeff. Uh, I know we were talking a little bit about your uh, microphones. Uh, you you love those things. Um, and we're talking about some other gear. We'll be your one no, piece. They would, save. You know, <laughs> it was one of the first. They're old. Uh, okay, my so mics. microphones are gone. No, my, my, my first thing I would save is my controller. It's in a wheeled case. So I grab that sucker and then drive that baby right outside. Um, yeah, because I've got so much other stuff. Actually, you know, my receivers are in my uh, controller case, so so it's all built in and it's all one one self contained unit. Uh, yeah, that, that that's uh, that's definite. My uh, my controller and those things are they're pricey now. You know, it's hard to get deals on them. The um, you know, second thing I would probably try to grab uh, my uh, my Maui's my Gen twenty my, uh, Maui twenty eight Gen twos is uh if i could grab those in one or two trips i would do that but definitely your early systems one thing yeah the one thing i would grab is the my ddj 1000 srt in a pro x led road case and i can imagine right now jeff throwing it on top of his golf cart and driving the golf cart out like a boss yeah. out of his uh, garage take the golf cart first <laughs> yeah well hey you know, take, take the golf cart take whatever you need to do to move with Go, uh, golf cart cart van whatever you can grab it and throw it in there and take off uh mr brettley up in wisconsin um which i just saw a uh a headline uh for a man uh change his name to uh um i'll put it this way it would be uh, a slang of with uh referring to Mila Chantilly I got in some legal trouble i gotta share that with you but he legally changed his name to something and um yeah, Wisconsin is a unique bird. So let's say the uh, Wisconsin ran out of beer and everyone's going crazy, and you had to save your <laughs> you had to save your blank. What would be that blank item you would save? Again, your laptop is safe. So whatever laptop that you use mostly, that's safe. Your your daughter's safe. Your dogs are safe. Your See, vehicle's safe. But what was the one thing you had run and grab? You you've just laid it out in such a fashion because my dogs are safe. I've got. My office and all my decks are safe, so we're good there. My daughter and everything's downstairs, so we have a few more odds and ends and gear downstairs. I would literally walk out to my garage, grab my two LD Icoas and my toad, and push it all out the door and just start pushing. Okay. Because my toad has all my cables in it, an extra controller, and everything I need to run a ceremony. Stands, okay. if worse came to worse, throw them on chairs or bar stools and get my ratchet straps. You know, and that that's that's the important stuff. Your toad and yeah. a couple speakers. Okay, I so I that right out the garage. Okay, and that that's that. I know that toads are not cheap. You know, five six rand for a toad. It's that it's 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 not cheap. But especially you know, it's part of your presentation of what you do for a setup. It's it's an important thing. And I see that your uh, customer search manager is asking for some assistance there. So oh yes, <laughs> protector of the top half of the office. Well, yeah, she wants her pets. <laughs> yeah. I, usually my customer service manager comes in here a couple of times during the show, so I know exactly what it's like. Um, so, Mr. Dixon, I'm going to come back to you. What is the thing you would save 
grab, run in and grab, throw on a cart, walk it out, carry over your head, whatever it is. Hmm. Still haven't came up with any because I don't have any neck equipment that I'm like so attached to. If anything, I'll try to grab a ba the bag with all my little hard drives because then because I also do music and beats, so I got all my original stuff right there. So it'll either be that or the and make sure I have my phone. But as far as equipment, I can't think of any. And then the ones that I would try to grab, they so heavy it. I'll end up losing my life trying to take all that stuff. Well, out. again, you hit you had time to put it like on a rock or roller cart or something like that. So you can mm -hmm. roll it out. It's not you got a beast now coming over your head and that's it. I'm saying you could throw it out of a cart or something, or it, like you know, throw it in the back of a vehicle. If it was in your garage, you had your vehicle right there, the back was open, you could take it, put it in the back of your vehicle and drive it out. So, you know, again, it's the one piece that you would have to save. And again, what uh, Matt said was his back with his case with all his cables in there. So again, hard drives is, is an important thing. Yes, I guess I guess one of my controllers, one of the controllers. Which one's your but favorite? Hopefully, hopefully, um, I'm leaning more on the Rev One. I use that more because of the portability. But then for the big stuff, I like my SX Two, but it's just too heavy with the case. But if the if it was to happen right after a gig, because I'm notorious for not unpacking my car, because I have like busy stuff during the week, I have all my stuff still in my car, so I have everything. Well, that's why you park your vehicle in the garage and lock it up. So you're <laughs> you're good and safe, not to worry about it. And um, you know, again, you want to protect your equipment. So uh, I'm gonna go to the chat real quickly, and I'm gonna answer the question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I see. Uh, let's see here. I see Brentley's in the chat. I think I saw Jeff in there. Uh, Adrian E. Hey, what's going on? Uh, I see talking about the Phoenix. Uh, that's Phoenix Pro. I take it for the microphones. Uh, I know uh, Brentley and I were talking uh, before. We we're talking about microphones. And uh, he was very happy with his microphones. He uh, loves using the theirs uh, microphones. Um, cool thing says he's taking his Rockville booth. There you go. See, that's that's one of the things there. Uh, Jeff says uh, <laughs> Matt <laughs> Matt and his subs. Yeah, I would say that. You know, uh, I'm surprised you wouldn't roll out his uh, 18s. You know, they have they have wheels on the back of them. Um, Let's see here. Uh, more about Phoenix stuff. Uh, yeah, so see Bradley talk about his toad, and uh, uh, he would also say a uh, cool thing said he was saving his new arc uh, Mixstream Pro. That that is a cool, that is an awesome thing. And then you know, it's one of the things. The reason why I asked that is because some things are not new. Like I would go and save my two cdjs and my nexus uh mixer my nexus 900 mixer and that's because that right there i love using my cdjs it's the closest i get to doing vinyl uh even though i love my xz even though i love i, I have an sx2 i i you know it's a workhorse um which is now my second my backup uh piece uh i i would definitely would you know my customer service manager's here now uh i would definitely would uh save um if i had to save one thing um would be the um uh, my uh coffin case with my uh cdjs and my 900 nexus mixer cuz uh, those are you can't can't get those anymore and xz you can i can get those all day long sx2 i can get the newer version of it and you know be happy with it cuz it's it's similar but it does a few more things but that those cdjs it's like I have too much history with them. And that's the hard part is that you don't want to give something up. And with everything going on with uh, our lives and business and stuff like that, the other thing also when people do things uh, such as a gig and you have to uh, go somewhere and talk to a venue, talk to a, uh, a customer, talk to anything. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question. This is a kind of a yes or no kind of question. When you either in person on Zoom or however way you decide to do, because I do Zoom or for a first meeting because it's easy, simple. Do you share pictures, video, or anything with those clients to show them what your setup is, 
how you do things, how you do a ceremony or anything, or you just tell them to go to social media to look at stuff or go to uh, YouTube channels. Like that. Or do you actually bring stuff and say, hey, you know, here's my tablet. If you're in person, here's some video, here's some pictures. Or, hey, um, you know, we're in Zoom, pull it up, you know, share on Zoom, you know, whatever you're sharing. What do you do? So I'm going to start with, I saw Brantley shaking his head, yes. Uh, DJ Brantley, what do you do to share with clients? Do you do Zoom more or in person more? Since COVID, obviously about half and half. Half Zoom or FaceTime, half, uh, what do you call it, in person. When I do in person, I'll bring a laptop or an iPad, obviously, more often than not. And if they want to see video, cool. If they want to see pictures of, you know, they've got some color ideas, I can pull up some different pictures of my setups. But more often than not, by the time I've gotten to an in-person meeting or even a uh, FaceTime or Zoom meeting, they've scoped my site out, checked out my links, and they've educated themselves enough where they kind of have an idea of what they are looking for from me already. And those, you know, and I, I have definitely have to throw, you know, many kudos to Mitch Taylor out there for, uh, for this, but marketing yourself correctly, they will pre-qualify themselves by the time they hit your email box. And with that, every one of the leads I'm getting, they already know what they really want from me. And it's, am I closing 100%? Oh, hell no. But at least it's got me on the right path, if that helps. And that's that's one of the things that, you know, you're trying, you're trying to explain to something to someone, and they have it in their mind, one thing, and then when you show them the item that you're showing them, whatever it is, how you're doing something, how you have something set up, this venue does this. And you show it to them and they had something different in their mind. Sometimes they're like, oh, really? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And it's, 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 you're educating your customer. Also, you're helping your customer walk through that. Uh, Jeff, when you meet clients, you sit down and you talk to them either, again, Zoom or uh, in person. Uh, what do you do? What do you, do you bring stuff? Do you show stuff? And do you prefer more Zoom more or do you prefer in person more? Um, I prefer in person. Um, usually I'll find out what they're looking for and what their budget is and what they're, you know, what, what they're trying to accomplish with their dance floor. And then I will try to accommodate that with the, you know, the best setup that that money can buy. Uh, and I will give them some options. Uh, to let them know that, you know, hey, here is option A, option B. You know, if you want to spend this much money, then, you know, you're going to, you know, you, this is what you can get. Um, you know, cause some some don't want moving heads. Uh, you know, nobody wants uh, speckled lighting uh, at a wedding. Um, you know, school dances, the more lighting, the better, you know, just crazy stuff, you know, just bright and, you know, gaudy is fine. Uh, but for weddings, you know, they're a little bit more classy. And, you know, lately in the past couple of years, is, uh, most of the weddings I've done have just been up lighting and they're fine with that. And I'll try to push them sometimes a little bit more to, uh, okay, what about, you know, some moving heads and, you know, good liven up the dance floor. And they're like, nah, nah, don't care for it. So, and it's, you know, I get it. You know, it depends on the venue, it depends on the couple and it depends on their budget. But, um, you know, I do have, uh, pictures of a lot of that on my website that they have already usually, you know, found. So they have that going in knowing kind of what's available, what I, what my setups look like. So yeah, that's, uh, I prefer in meeting or in, in person meeting and, um, uh, you know, zooms if we have to, but usually it's a phone call and then, then an in-person meeting. And that's, that's one of the things is that, you know, asking people what they prefer, I feel it's a big, important thing. Um, and, you know, I feel also doing the indirect lighting for uh, weddings gives it more of an elegant feel to it versus, you know, sometimes it's too much in people's faces. And I know Matt loves his lasers and Matt loves his moving heads and Matt loves his dual 18 subwoofers. But mm -hmm. again, you also follow the clientele that you're, you're dealing with and the clientele knows what you're dealing with and what you're walking through. And that's one of the things I, I, you know, 
I, I today I was talking to a venue, Trace and I went to a venue today. Uh, they took over a facility. It was another company before. Uh, that company unfortunately went uh, belly up um, through a scam, and the new company has taken over the uh, location. Uh, the location's been closed for a while, and they re uh, they basically redid the whole venue, uh, repainting it, replacing floors, and and changed things around. Really made it very elegant, and that's one of the things I'll explain to the um, the venue manager today. Is that the, I had pictures from when it was the other company. And I showed them the pictures of what we did, but I also explained to them what we do now, because that was back in 2019 when that company went out. And now it's 2024, just five years later. And I said, we've changed things a lot. And we've done things, we're doing things differently now versus back in 2019. And I showed them some pictures of stuff that's more current. And it's much more elegant, especially their slot. It are more of a... Um, more of an expensive place. They're not a, you know, uh, an expensive uh, venue and their clientele is more selective. And that's the client clientele that we deal with. So going back and talking to clientele, find out if you're right fit. I feel it's always an important thing. And Matt, I know that you probably, your very big presence on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure you have lots of video, lots of information. When you sit down with a client, first thing first, do you like Zoom more or in person for the first meeting? Then do you bring or show pictures and video of stuff you've done in the past? Uh, so I don't do any Zooms. Uh, I don't do any in-person meetings. You can text me or call me. That's pretty much all I really agree to. Um, I will do a Zoom if they absolutely request it or a FaceTime. But like, you don't need to see what I like. If you want to see what I look like, just go to my pages. Like, There's plenty of content of me. Um, I just would rather like phone calls for me are easier. Um, and then, but I only talk to people with iPhones. You have to remember that, uh, iPhone is part of my whole business plan and strategy. If you have an iPhone, great. Then we'll hop on a call. I'll be able to text you everything I'm talking about as we're on the call. Be like, here's my pricing. Here's, uh, this video of this, here's this monogram. Here's this boom, boom, boom. If they don't, then I'll opt for the zoom because then I could screen share and show them like some slides I prepare ahead of time or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously with my business, uh, a lot of our packages are based on what lighting is being provided and sound. So everything's different. So, um, uh, a lot of couples do book, like we have two this month that are booked, have the laser package one for this Saturday actually. So, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a very visual thing. They got to like, you know, I, I do get the clients that are like, oh, we don't need any lighting. There's string lighting there. And then like a month or two before the wedding, they'll be like, do you offer up lighting? Like they they see my videos or they follow me on Instagram. And they're like, oh, we like that. We want that. So, um, but I don't, I just, I don't like wasting my time. And like, if I have to spend time getting ready and looking pretty, like, and I can't just schlep it like this, as us Jewish people say, schlepping around, um, that's, that's, it's they got to make it worth it but i think just everybody's got an iphone almost everybody and uh it just makes it really easy to just send 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 like i, I have some con clients that book all through text like we don't even we email once for the inquiry and then i send them a text to follow up and then they just start texting me back and forth and we iron out a package get a contract and call it good so yeah that's my pipeline but lightning's important. I was, uh, at least in, in my part, there's, you know, obviously other parts of the country, they don't care as much. Um, but here you've got LA up north, San Diego down south, and we're in Orange County. And people are starting to really care about the aesthetic of their wedding and, you know, what kind of lighting you could bring and how to add to it. Um, so that's, yeah. And that, that's one of the things that everyone does things differently. And what you guys out there, I see uh, Adrian EC, he does, he the copies kind of what Matt does. And then um, Mike, DJ Mike, Mike, you know, phone calls, Facebook, instant messenger, email, but he meets in person um, a couple of times before the wedding. And that, we kind of do that too. And what we usually do is do a Zoom call. You know, I always set up a Zoom call because that way, kind of face to face through videos like we are doing right now talking um you know and i usually have a black t-shirt on like i have right now <laughs> and tracy sits next to me she's always the eye candy because she's my beautiful uh bride 
But, you know, it's one of the things that, you know, both of us talk to the person and talk to both sides and they get to know us personally a little bit and feel better and more comfortable with that. Uh, and then I share pictures, I share pictures, share video, answer questions, walk through things, you know, um, and then back and forth, communicate, text, phone, email, whatever they prefer. And then usually we have an in-person me uh, meeting beforehand. When we get into a, um, an out-of-state wedding, so a couple, like one of the couples we talked to uh, this past weekend, uh, they were uh, in California, up in the San Francisco area. So they are originally from here and they moved out there and they're having a ceremony back here at a venue that we're preferred vendor at. And one of the things that talking to them is that if they're not here on time, and we've done this before for other uh, similar couples, uh, we would do a Zoom meeting and have them proof the music and listen to the music via Zoom and share, you know, do share, uh, share screen and so forth and so on. So it's one of the things that I believe Zoom is very good because Tracy and I have a lot of times go to meet clients and they run late, something happened, they forgot to tell us, or a few times, more than once, we've been ghosted. And, you know, we we verify with a client that, yeah, we're supposed to meet them and stuff like that. Austin, they just don't show up. So doing the Zoom thing, we've decided since COVID, and it works very well, our first meeting is Zoom. And then from there, you know, again, maybe a Zoom meeting again, but mostly in person, depending on what is, you know, transparent at the wedding. So Mr. Dixon, for you, with your business, uh, do you prefer Zoom or in-person for the first meeting? And then the other thing is that when you are either in-person or on a Zoom meeting, do you share pictures, video, information on what you do? Looks of, of gear, looks of setup, how a room looks, a room looks lit up with uplighting, anything as such, do you, do you share that information with them? Um, it depends on the, what the situation is, because it's not like, like, for example, of late, I've been getting a lot of uh, either um, client referrals or they come and seek me out. So they have either seen me somewhere or been to my website or YouTube channel. So they kind of like know what they're getting. They just need to know the price. Um, but as far as having pictures and stuff, like when I get um, someone I don't know, like on a not a wedding wire, when they ask for information, I have a brochure with all my pictures and um, prices. And then I also got my social at the end that they can go look at pictures. But for the weddings that I did in November, we use Zoom because I, we need to go back and forth with the uh, floor uh, layout. And it's easier to share the pictures there. So that's how I just do it. Okay. And that that's, that's the important stuff is, there, there, this is, and again, you guys watching out there, you're on YouTube or here on Twitch. This is not, you have to do this. This is how this shows you the difference between how everyone thinks. There's not one person right or wrong. It all boils down to how people approach what they feel is best for their business. And you know, like right now, Matt and uh, Brentley are, are talking a little bit in chat about how they do things, how they want to see things. Matt, you know, he can read in a conversation via text and email on which way it's flown with a person versus Brentley. He wants to see the person and see facial expressions, which is very important. If they're happy, they're smiling or are they just disconnected and don't care. And it, it kind of also makes you feel, okay, are you the right fit for this customer as well? And that, again, you're doing both ways. You're proving, probing through questions on text messaging, or if you're probing questions on whatever in person, uh, Facebook, messenger or anything if you're doing anything at all and then mikey mike said i did uh, a wedding a couple from hawaii and they did uh they had everything back here in northeastern pennsylvania uh but there was no zoom it was text uh email and a phone calls so again it sometimes you know whatever the reason is you got to do what works best you know again this is not every single couple some couples don't understand you know technology they don't understand how to do things. Zoom is not their friend. And you have to accommodate for them. Just like, you know, we have an app uh, for uh, our couples. Um, and, you know, I use Vibo. And Vibo, I, I, I really like the Vibo app. I like how Vibo works. Uh, and sometimes you run to people who are 
technically illiterate for a lack of a better term and they're not very good with apps and they may have a smartphone or they have a, basically a flip phone they don't do text they don't do anything because that's not they don't like to do it and again i can take the same thing which i still have my excel spreadsheet i could print it out and mail it to them if i have to so again different clients you want to take care of them help them out and change around your your aspect and change around your what you're doing to accommodate them and that's what it's about you know how to kind of do things differently and not just look at one way there's multiple ways and you heard from all the different djs something similar but some things are totally different um it was a pro it was prior to zoom well there you go so that's 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 one of the things it's a hard thing um cool thing says last month i got to dj a night at the shrine uh special needs prom and everything everyone had a great time good for you dj cool thing i'm glad to hear that glad that you're hearing having some gigs you're having some fun out there in south carolina not to be confused with jeff in north carolina and also i'm going to go to jeff on this one right here uh jeff when you talk to a client i'm going to say like a fob question to what we're just talking about when you talk to a client and you explain to them what you're be it whatever it is, school dance, wedding, corporate event. Do you hold a date for a client? And if you do hold a date for a client, how long do you hold it for? Do you hold it for a week, 10 days, five days? What what do you usually do? And if someone contacts you during that time, what happens then? Yeah, I mean, I will hold it um, if it's open, you know, and, and no one else is talking uh, to me about it. Um, and... Uh, but it, yeah, as soon as someone else is looking at that same date, uh, I will let them know that, hey, you know, someone else is already looking at that date. So if you want it, then you need to put some money down, you know, immediately um, if you want to reserve that. And, um, and but I usually I, it's only happened to me once. Um, uh, so I went back to the original client and and I told them that somebody else is looking at that date and you know, they were all still hemming and hawing. And I'm just like, okay, well, let me know. And I went ahead and booked the other guy that was ready to put money down. So, um, you know, and, and clients are like that. No big deal. You know, they're, they're, they're looking around and they're shopping around and, you know, I get it. You know, I do the same thing when I'm uh, buying a car. So. And that's one of the things that it's, Sometimes people try to just look at price and price is not everything, you know, and go, we're going to go back to you buying a car. You can look at a Suburban and one Suburban could be $60,000. Another Suburban could be $70,000. Another Suburban could be $80,000. And it's different tiers of equipment. And depending on what you want to do, if you want something very, very basic, you know, very basic, you know, cloth seats, you know, Armstrong windows, you actually got cranked down, which I don't think they mean do it anymore unless you go like corporate level. You know, they could at least give power windows, but very, very basic, a very basic infotainment center, you know, air conditioning and, you know, four tires, basically. You can save money. If you want something more luxurious, you want to have the panoramic sunroof, you want to have the LED headlights, you want to have the puddle lights, you want to have the leather seats and, you know, 20-way adjustable driver's seat and so forth, so on you're going to pay more money. And that's one of the things you people sometimes look at that only versus what do you get for those benefits? Why is there a price difference between this and that? And that's, you know, one of the things with, you know, people with him and hauling, a lot of times they're him and hauling over that. And it's like, oh man, just sometimes you just want to say, hey, um, yeah, um, you might want to uh, think about it very quickly because that day is a popular day. It might fill up very quickly. So DJ Brentley with you. It's, I come to you and say, hey, DJ Brentley, I want, you know, May 1st. I, I'm just throwing a date out there. It means absolutely nothing. But May 1st, you're open. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know if I want to hire you or not. What do you usually do? Do you give them a time? Do you say, hey, you have five days, 10 days? And, you know, and let's say Matt then comes to you and says, hey, I want May, May 1st too. Do you call back to me and say, hey, um, uh, I know your guy wants May 1st. Are you, you taking it or not? Cause I haven't signed a contract with you yet. What do you do? So honestly, it depends how far out the date is. First center. If it's less than six months, I'm really not inclined to. Cause you're rushed. You're doing things in the heat of the moment kind of thing. I don't want to run into complaints down the road. 
And the other part of that being at six months, that's when I sent all my club dates out for the next, you know, portion of the year, so to speak. Now, once they've contacted me, I like to have an answer within two or three weeks. And I'll let them know if I don't hear from them within a month. I'm, you know, or they don't confirm within a month, anybody can take it. Now, in that time frame, I will let them know if someone hits me up. And I'll be very clear with them, you know, when we're talking, if you have first dibs on the date. But if I get a message or talk to somebody, I will let you know. And then the date will, if you can't make a decision, I will have to defer. And yeah, I've done it a few times when I've just been tired of waiting on a couple. Even though I don't have anybody asking about the date, I will message them, hey, somebody asked me about the date. And 90% of the time, they will sign that date. And that, that's that's the important thing. You know, sometimes you have to, you know, basically tell customers that there is a um, a push or a need on that date. And you have to defy to them what that means. And you kind of have to maybe sometimes a little nudging a little bit to, to get them to understand that, yeah, okay, I have the date open now, but, you know, a week from now or something like that. I may not. And that's what, you know, holding a date, like uh, we had two client meetings um, just uh, this past weekend and both client meetings, we talked to them um, and we're holding the dates for 10 days, which I'll, we'll give you 10 days. Someone contacts us for your date and these are 20, 25 dates. You have first right of refusal. So the thing is that we'll contact you and say, hey, you know, we have another couple interested in your date. If you want to book with us, fine and great. If you don't want to book with us, we're going to give the date to the other people. And, you know, at the end of 10 days, if I didn't hear anything from them, I'll send them an email saying, hey, do you want to book us or not? And then see what happens. If they say, yeah, I'm going to book with you. Yeah, send a contract over. Okay, fine, great. They would send nothing and we get ghosted. Okay, then, you know, no big deal. But it's one of the things that we try to, you know, benefit err on the side of benefit for the customer and also benefit the doubt and say, hey, you know, we're going to hold a date for you. Uh, next year for dates that, you know, are booking now, okay, fine, great. I can hold a date, right? But like in within six months, yeah, they, they could be panicking. They could be, you know, hey, oh my God, you know, I, I forgot to order. I forgot to have a DJ. I need a DJ for this. Or, you know, a DJ backed out. And that's usually most people with that nine times out of 10, I probably say they're booking that, that time when they talk to you, they are more or less, they're booking you beforehand. They want you as, as, a, as their service. So Matt, with you in California, and I know California is laid back because that is the uh, home of uh, Snoop Dogg. And uh, you know, he likes to uh, have his money on the mine mm -hmm. and uh, everything. Uh, got a question for you. Do you hold dates? And if you hold a date, how long do you hold a date for? And if someone else contacts you during that period, what do you do? What do you what do you do? Contact uh, your first customer or what? So I mean, I don't have 10 leads a day coming in. Uh so like if somebody reaches out about a date and we're starting to have a conversation and they haven't ghosted me, like they give me the message of, oh, uh, I'm gonna talk to my fiance and get back to you. Like I don't necessarily hold it, but like I put a note on it so that if someone else reaches out sooner or whenever about that date, I tell them, hey, I just got an inquiry for this date. Are you interested in moving forward uh, or is it looking promising? So I kind of just get a feel for it. Um, I don't really hold like, you know, so I give them the chance to close on it. Um, same thing, like after I have a conversation, I tell them like, look, we'll keep the date for you while you guys think about it. Um, I'll let you know in the meantime, if anybody reaches out. So um, unlike Brett Lee, when I pressure people, they seem to say, oh, you're too far out of our budget. It's okay, you can release it. So it kind of backfires sometimes. <laughs> so uh, I tend to just like, cause I, I've done that to like, get them to like hurry up and figure this out already uh, when I didn't have a lead and it led to a couple's, uh, a few just, you know, leaving uh just saying oh no you're too far out of our budget uh without like you know thinking about it more so i do keep certain dates open um i keep like a couple saturdays in september and october i have 
purposely open right now for school dances, homecomings. Uh, same thing with May and April. I keep a few dates open. There's one in March. Like schools that I know are going to use me every year and they do their dance at the same time every year. I always keep those open. So um, those dates I do hold. And then what I do is if somebody is asking about them, I just quote them like a starting price of five grand, uh, which is like, you know, if you want to pay that, then I'll take the hold off the date. Uh, but I don't usually like to do that because I do like to do a variety of events. I don't like to do only weddings all the time. So and then I keep I keep certain dates, two dates a year. I keep open for wedding shows um, because I'm not going to miss the biggest wedding show that there is. And that's I the thing out certain dates for club stuff. Like yeah. Oktoberfest in the Cross, Senior Pub Crawl Night, Graduation Weekend. St. Patrick's sorry, Day. I may not make wedding money, but they're way too much fun to miss out on. Yeah. And that's the thing is that, you know, you have to balance your business, especially you see what's going on. And sometimes people are, you know, hey, you know what? I, I you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I need to do. And uh, Mike said here he had a couple send in uh, their down payment a month before the wedding. They backed out and asked for a down payment back. I told him, read the contract. All deposits are non-refundable with cancer within 30 days of the day of the wedding and uh, must pay me in full. Okay. Uh, you know, that right there, I would say the deposit, keeping that part uh, within 30 days, making them pay you in full. Uh, I, I Again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV. Um, I'm not here to give any kind of advice. But the thing is that you also got to look at if you are have to take someone to court, will a judge, you know, air, you know, go on your side and say, yes, uh, they owe you this amount of money because of the contract. I don't know. I, I, every state's different. Every area is different. So the thing is that it's one of the things that I think walking away with a deposit is one thing. Ask for a full payment within 30 days. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that one. But again, if you did, if you did that and they, did, they paid that, I would say, hey, it's a win for you. Uh, Mr. Dixon, for you. What do you do when someone comes ask you, hey, uh, I want to think about this? Do you give them a time to think about? Or you say, hey, you got to do it right now. Or if you do give them time, do you uh, say uh, someone else comes along and says, hey, uh, are you available? Um, what do you do? Uh, it depends. Again, it, it depends on the situation. Because if I know them and they are a repeat customer, I usually hold that um, date for them because they pretty much been um consistent of, of being on top of um booking me but if it's somebody that i don't know um i'll hold that i tell them i hold the date but if someone comes uh you know and takes that date before them and they willing to pay that they might lose it but i will show them the courtesy of giving them a call before i um take that date away though but so far i really hadn't had ran into that most people once I tell them that, we'll either sign a, go ahead, at least sign a contract or put a down payment on. So. And that's the important thing is that I think communication is half that battle of explaining to people. But also, you, I believe not to be a used car sales dealership. I know we talked a little bit about car sales before with the analogy, what Jeff said, and with a suburban. Um, but the thing is, I don't want to be like a used car lot. I don't want to pressure people into paying for services. And uh, sometimes, you know, you have repeat customers like you have. That's an awesome thing. I think that's that's really great. And especially, you know, people are going to hire you again for another event, especially if, it's, you know, again, they have it over every year. They have a birthday party, you know, a birthday party or a Christmas party or whatever it is or a corporate gig or whatever that, that repeat is. That's awesome. You know that person is going to hire you. You kind of keep the date open and you, you you cover it. But giving someone a few days to th think things through, that's what I like, I like to do and Tracy likes to do. It's that we don't feel pressure to have to. And sometimes you like the, the one uh, young lady we talked to the other day, she was going to talk to a few other uh, DJs. And it's like, yeah, go ahead. Talk to them, you know, um, for price wise. Again, some people are about price. They look at price. Okay, hey, your two thousand uh, dollars DJ no skills over here is five hundred dollars. Why is there a fifteen hundred dollar price? Well, DJ no skills doesn't have any skills. DJ no skills doesn't can't do this, this, and this. 
but I don't try and do, you know, talk bad about the competition, but I just say, Hey, this is what I can do. I don't know what he or she can do, but this is what I can do. What, what are they offering? And, you know, Hey, I'm offering that plus all this. That's why I'm more and expertise. How long have you been doing it for? And what you're presenting and you know some of the things that you see out there people present how they present their setups how they present what they do sometimes are less desirable you know matt has very uh good looking uh setups as well as you do mr dixon as well as brentley does as well as jeff does and i hope i do <laughs> i can't judge myself because i don't want to do that but everyone here has great great looking stuff and it's one of the things that we try our hardest and we are always looking to go to the next thing, which one of the things I want to talk about, I talked to uh, actually to Matt the other day. Um, he uh, sent me the information for the company in China who made his facade. If you haven't seen the video yet on YouTube, he has a video up on YouTube that he has a facade uh, made for the front of his DJ table with some gear behind it. And it's a pretty cool facade. It's the same material and the same piping as you do for a photo booth background. So that's that 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 pipe that goes around feet and so forth and so on. But this is actually a three-sided photo, uh three-sided uh booth for your DJ booth. So it's you know four foot high, you know, hundred inches wide, whatever it is, to put a six or eight foot table behind it. The um, uh, thing with, I'm talking to him, I want to get one of those because I want to hide things more. I always want to look to upgrade my stuff uh, to a next step and go to another look. Now, Brentley has the Toadmatic. He loves that Toadmatic. I had the same booth Jeff has as well, but that I use that booth only on the higher package. I don't use it for every package because, again, I look at what the customer's paying for. And if I'm going to bring the booth out, I want to put the TV in front of it because I, I just love how the TV looks in the front. And I'm sure Jeff loves that too, how the TV looks in the front of it. Just like Brentley loves that TV in the front. And Mr. Dixon also has a really nice presentation too for his booth. And he wants to look nice. A lot of times I use a facility table, you know, a six foot, eight foot table the facility gives me. But with that, you know, basically that facade that, uh, you know, uh, Matt it got a hold of, I can cover it up, make it even look nicer than it was previously. And that's the thing is that we are always looking to better our craft and better ourselves. And I told Matt, I'm like, once you buy a bunch and sell them to the DJs here and the DJs at period, uh, he said, no, he has too many irons in the fire. He doesn't want to deal with, you know, shipping and so forth and so on. But I will also tell you this as well out there. Matt does do L, uh, LED signs. I have my business sign I use for wedding shows. I have that right there made by Matt. So Solstice LED, I have that. I paid for that. Uh, I will tell you that it is an awesome thing to have. I don't hang it up back here because, again, I keep it for wedding shows. If I put it back here, I would damage it in a heartbeat because this is just a curtain and behind it is a treadmill. <laughs> and I don't want something banging around hitting stuff. But the thing is that when you're trying to better stuff, you're trying to do things, um, you always have to look at how to present yourself and everyone here presents their their setup nicely they you know tape things down they look great and that's part of presentation you sell to clients the dj no skills that are you know four or five six hundred dollars eight hundred dollars whatever your market price is a lot of times they don't do the fine tuning they don't do the gaffer tape on things they don't hide cables they don't care that much i've seen djs that take you know a gig bar, which again, I know Matt doesn't like a gig bar. Gig bars are a tool like anything else. And I have one. I use it at a certain venue because it's the only thing I can use. But I have it off to a side. I have it far away. Or I have it behind, not in front. I've seen guys put it right in front of their booth, right in front of their table. And it's like, I never understood that because that's a tripping hazard. No one here does that. You no, know, I've seen, I've seen Dwayne setups. I've seen Jeff setups. I've seen Matt setups. I've seen Brentley setups. I've seen cool things set up. I've seen Tommy set up. I've seen uh, the Moose set up. No one does that here. And that's the reason why, unfortunately, again, Tommy and Moose are not here tonight. But unfortunately, there are people out there like that. And I would like to say those people who are doing that, 
we want to better ourselves and better our craft and there's ways to do things. And if you feel that's the best way of doing something, Hey, so be it. That's fine. Great. But if you want to learn a little bit more, ask questions, ask, we're all here to give you our opinions. And it is our opinions and our information, but we want to do that because we want to better your craft. So that way you can charge what Jeff charges or what Matt charges or what Brentley charges or what Dwayne charges or what Hunter charges. These are all working DJs, you know, and we want to make sure that you are successful in what you do. And with that said, you know, we try to make sure that we answer all the questions. And I, over here, um, let's see here, before I got my rock booth, I had a four foot table used in just a scrim. Yes, I remember those days for you. And yet you got your rock booth. And again, you, stepped up what you did, the cool thing. And that's the important stuff. You keep progressing and we all try and progress. Now, before we get off here, I'm gonna ask a very quick question, go around the table real quickly. And um, before Matt has to run off, eat dinner and stuff like that, he's always, you know, in California, he's a couple hours behind me and it's like, you know, lunchtime there. <laughs> but um, I, I like to ask everyone this, um, if, if, another DJ came up to you and asked for help on something. And again, I saw Dwayne with a video on it. Uh, would you want to do a video for them or would you want to do a Zoom call for them? And I know Dwayne just did a video for a guy asking about uh, Harbinger speakers, but Dwayne, would you prefer someone, if they reached out to you asking for a question to do a Zoom call or do a video onto YouTube? Um, it doesn't matter. I did the video because I'm trying to get back into doing YouTube videos consistently. So I saw that as an opportunity to give me an excuse to do a video because I was going to just type a, a, you know, a text reply, but it or, but no, okay. with that one, that one probably would have to be a, a YouTube video because okay. it was something I had to like pull out. But if it's like just me and you just talking and I can just show them real quick, we can do a zoom. Because I've done that um, during the um, pandemic when people had questions about setting up their audio devices and um, whatnot to try to do like gigs, virtual gigs and stuff. We do like I did a Zoom call with them to show them all the settings and all that. And that's the important thing. Um, Mikey Mike says everyone had to do what's best for themselves, which is very true. Uh, him and BSR, Brian S. Red. If you haven't seen Brian S. Red on YouTube, go watch Brian S. Red. He has some great videos up there. Uh, are physically challenged and they're disabled. Um, and they have to make things easy possible for them. Yes, they have they have challenges and they do things to make things. I have a bad knee and I can't stand for long periods of time. So there's a lot of video of me and pictures of me sitting because I can't stand for a long time. And uh, that's why I'm going to the gym in the morning. You know, I, I'll be up at the gym tomorrow morning at, you know, 4.50 getting up and I'll be at the gym at by 5.20 <laughs> walking on a treadmill. So it's one of those things that um, uh, it, it's it's like anything else. You, you have to do what's best for you. And that's an important thing. So DJ uh, Brentley, if someone reached out to you and asked you for your assistance, do you prefer to do a Zoom call Facebook call, or do you prefer to do a video on YouTube? Whatever works for them, honestly. And if the material is worthy to put on a channel, then by all means, I would probably wind up doing a video. But yeah, with my DJ crew, when they're having issues, I can't tell you how many times, even my seasoned DJs forever after will call me up, FaceTime me and be like, hey, uh, how do you fix this? I'm like, dude, you're staring at the answer. Look where your hand is at. <laughs> Push that button. You. And he's. Like, and, and this is one of the kids who I brought up super well, and is like exceeded any expectation I've had of him because he stepped up and is like in the same clubs I'm at now. But he will call me up with some of the dumbest questions, like, "Really, dude? Come on now." But yeah, whatever works for whoever I'm dealing with, for real. And that's the thing is that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, coworkers can be uh, uh, kind of like knuckleheads in a bit. And it's kind of like three stooges in a way. And you're like, oh, come on, you should know that. But again, they're they're seeing it. They're not seeing it your end. And sometimes a different perspective, a different angle 
you see something that they're forgetting and it's like, yeah, it's, it's at that moment of like, Oh man, I forgot all about that. Or I haven't done this in a while. And it happens. It happens and as a manager. All you do is say, Oh, Hey, you know, uh, move your right hand. You see that button right there. Press that button. There you go. <laughs> Give him a thumbs up and move on. Jeff, if someone reached out to you and had a question and asked for help, do you prefer to do a video on YouTube or you prefer to do something like this, a Zoom call or Facebook or um, FaceTime or anything like that? Uh, yeah, like Bradley said, it's whatever works for them. I had somebody reach out to me. Um, they were asking how I got my um, Shelby wash effects on top of my uh, Mac ESRM 215s uh, the tops, and I have it centered. Uh, there's nowhere to attach it except on the edges, you know, for the uh, for the uh, mounts. It's not really mount uh, light mounts, but there are uh, holes up there where you can, you know, attach screws and bolts. So I, I explained to them, and they said, you know, I, I still don't get it. Can you send me a picture? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I took a picture and emailed it to them and showed them, you know, step by step the process of what I made. You know, so it was a a, a, a little bar that that the uh, wash effects will sit on, and I drilled a hole, and so it centers it up. It just looks uh, looks a lot cleaner when it's up on top centered up so stuff like that you know whatever whatever works and i had one guy reach out to me that was um uh you know his his question on youtube was spanish you know he was hispanic and uh and you know thank god for google translate i just went to google translate and uh answered him you know and um you know and, and he thanked me and i talked to him back so you know uh, i'm glad to help out whatever way i can that, that that is awesome, absolutely awesome there, Jeff. And you know, I just had a um, a uh, viewer on YouTube subscribe, and um, they're not in the U.S. And I was like, wow, I, I can't. I had to use Google Translate to see what it is and identify what it was, what they wrote. And you know, um, it, it was English on 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 the comment down below, but you know, they had stuff on their channel. I'm like, it's a cooking channel. The person has a cooking channel and they just followed us and it's like, oh, cool. You know, hopefully, hopefully we help them with something, you know, maybe a different way of looking at something. And that's the whole entire thing. You know, this is not just these things those pertain to DJ. They also pertain uh, uh, to other things in life, too. Sometimes, you know, a little life hack here and there, it works for a DJ. Like, again, what Jeff did by the fly points, putting two fly points and put a piece of metal, screw in the middle so the light's in the center. Sounds very simple, but maybe you take that and use it on another product, another item for another area. And that's a great thing about it. So Matt, for you, sir, if you have someone reach out to you, which I see you're texting right there, you probably have someone asking a question. If someone asks you a question, do you prefer to put up a video on YouTube or you prefer to do FaceTime or another Apple item to uh, talk to them? Because Matt is all about the Apple stuff. Um, Text me. I, I tell people, oh. Wait, yeah, I'm not muted. Okay. Uh, I tell people to text me. Like, I can send you a video or send a picture. I'm also a busy guy. Like, I don't have time to help my subscribers uh, with a little thing. I, I like, DJ uh, DJ Unstoppable. Like, him and I joke all the time that he has some of the dumbest followers because they ask the same questions week in and week out. How do I attach the wash effects to the top of the speaker? There's literally a handle right there. Get a spring clamp, dollar clamp right there. Or just... I don't know. There's a bolt on there. Turn the bolt in. It's like people ask very pointless questions, not pointless, but like, I think people ask too many questions before they try to do it themselves. And I, I was raised to try and figure out a solution before you ask for help. So I try to preach that to other people. That's why I like, I also don't like giving away any secrets or things that like have made my stuff better uh, because like that's unique to me and I want to keep it that way. So like when people ask, oh, where'd you get your lights from? Where'd you get this from? Where'd you get that from? I don't know. Do your research and find out. Um, so that's that's what I had to do. So I try to convince other people to do the same. Maybe I'm just a mean guy, but I, I uh, I've always been self sufficient, and I try to make others self sufficient. But if I get enough, like enough people asked how I did my lighting, and Rick Webb sent me something, and I'm like, all right, fine, I'll I'll address it in this one video. Like you can here's how to run freestyler, and here's how I set it up. But uh, if people DM me on Instagram, I'm I'm way I'm easy I'm easy on there because like 
if you're actually going to follow me and I'm going to get something out of it, then sure, I'll help you. But if you're just like spamming the comment section, asking questions that I've answered or you can find easily, then I don't know. Well, you, you, the old saying is, you know, you teach a man to fish exactly. eats for a life. You feed, give a man a fish eats for a day. So it's one of the things, but sometimes people just, they can't understand it. They no. don't grasp a concept. And again, sometimes walking someone, you know, holding their hand, walking through it, it's not a bad thing because it also makes you think, hey, maybe there's a better way of doing this. Maybe there's another way of doing something. So always expand your horizons and always look at, you know, uh, what you can do to make your life easier and make things simpler. The uh, big thing I just want to also say to you guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. And thank you all for being in a chat. Uh, cool thing. Um, I see your uh, chat there. And also, Mike, thank you. Uh, I, I can thank everyone in the chat tonight. We have a lot of people out there watching. Uh, I appreciate you all here. And I appreciate all of you guys' information and so forth. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure, please, hit that like button. Make sure you get the thumbs up. Smash that algorithm. Do me a favor. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. It takes a second or two. helps us out. And also spreads the word. And again, if you guys can spread the word, please do so i appreciate it. other than that this week we're going to go to uh i'm actually go to Dwayne. Dwayne, take us out for tonight all right i hope everyone enjoyed the show hopefully we'll see you next week have a great week take care and stay blessed thank you